Strange big hulking behemoths! Oh honey, look at that delightfully insane carnival barker or something. You there! Me? Do you want to beat the meadow with monstrous mechanized monsters? Yeah, I guess so. Well, look no further, because I have the perfect deck for you. It's called Earth Machine. Interesting. And and you're still you're still standing on the table. Well, how does it accomplish this unbelievable feat? Well, first it makes VFD. I'm out. Yeah, sorry. It sounds super boring. No, no, come back! No, it, it does other things! It's got plays! Uh... Hey, I, I just wanted to apologize for what I said. Oh, you mean when you said it was boring? No, I, I meant when I said sorry. I think you're a menace to society. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. I've always wanted to do an episode on Earth Machine, but... And don't laugh here. I'm serious. Don't laugh. Don't leave a comment saying you laughed. Don't mention me in your will after asphyxiating. Earth Machine was always too hard for me. Hey, Big Train Go Burr isn't as easy as it looks. Thankfully, fellow YugiTuber Aerosol TCG demystified the archetype on his channel and placed shockingly high in the most recent Chalice Slime Monthly. So now I can just follow his guides. Presenting Earth Machine. Before we begin, if you're on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I promise to play multiple said in next week's progression playoff. So here's the list and uh, look at all these one ofs. And they're all required by setup combos. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Chalice Slime monthly deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. With that out of the way, let's ease into Earth Machine. Earth Machine is an enigma. Trains has historically been an OTK deck with moderate amounts of success, but because their style of gameplay has been big man hit hard for so long, Konami has seen fit to print all manner of control tools for the archetype. After all, what are trains going to do with control tools? It turns out quite a lot, actually. By combining the Machina cards, the Infinitrack cards, and some classic train enablers, the deck has transformed from Click Yes Turbo into a skill-testing and intensely rewarding and adaptable monstrosity. I should note that nearly all the theory from this deck has been lifted whole cloth from Aerosol TCG, whose channel is in the description. Your turn 1 setups are non-linear, but all have the same few goals in mind. Summon Anger Knuckle, Resolve Tunneler, and get access to Citadel, pretty much in that order of importance. Your goal isn't to run your opponent out of life points, it's to run them out of cards, and to that end, Anger Knuckle set 3 is functionally an FTK. Over the course of your first turn, you're aiming to use almost every hard once per turn in the deck, pivoting through Harvester Searches, Dozer Summons, Box Adds, and Citadel Sends. Of course, because it's a deck printed in the year of our Lord 2021, it's got a VFD setup. But don't let that turn you off the strategy. Just think of it as the price of admission to the metagame. And once these machines are inside, the real fun begins. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, the Machina. Three Metal Cruncher, one Fortress, yes, I'm serious, and one Citadel. Next, our Infinitrax. Three Dozer, three Harvester, two Trencher, an Anchor Drill, and a Tunneler. Finally, some odds and ends, one AG box, the only hard garnet, one bullet train, and one Dara crane. Finally, we're on three Ash. For spells and traps, we're on three Heavy Forward, three Redeployment, our one card VFD, three Urgent Schedule, three Droplet, three Overdrive, two Torrential, and two Trap Trick. In the extra, we're on Zeus, Liba, Dora, Gustav, Slicer, VFD, Enter Blanier, Ding Girsu, Forward, Gear Gigant, Anger Knuckle, Ballista, and three copies of Goliath. And yes, you need to play all three. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Infernoble Knight. This deck has radically transformed in recent weeks, and suddenly it's good again. Unfortunately for our opponent, even though they've opened a bevy of hand traps, and Driver, mind you, an unfamiliarity with this matchup plays to our advantage. 
We have our one card VFD. We're going to lead with a copy of Redeployment, getting a copy of Metal Cruncher and a Fortress, and then normal summon the Metal Cruncher. As we normal summon, our opponent Ashes. No big deal. We have the target in hand already in Harvester. We'll go for Ballista and activate Ballista's effect for Ancient Gear Box. We'll trigger Box's effect for a Trencher, then send both of those to the graveyard to bring back the Fortress. We'll activate Trencher's effect to summon back this Harvester, activate the first effect to get a copy of Brutal Dozer, then the second effect to modulate to nine. What do you know? That's two nine-star monsters. It's TK Calamity's time. We'll activate the effect of Brutal Dozer to summon itself from hand and a Tunneler from deck before overlaying for a River Storm activating its effect to get a speedy express bullet train to our grip. From here, we can go into a Goliath, trigger the graveyard effect of River Stormer, trigger the graveyard effect of Goliath to give our VFD a little bit more material, and go into a second one. We'll bring back the Fortress, go into Anger Knuckle, and trigger the effect of Tunneler, shuffling five cards from our graveyard back into the deck to draw two. We're going to set two and proceed to end phase, triggering the effect of Bullet Train to get back this Dozer before passing it back to our opponent. We'll TK as soon as possible. They have a Gamma, and we wouldn't be activating it in draw phase if we didn't have an Ash. They'll... I suppose set a Plague Spreader after Durin Dalling. They'll get a copy of Roland to hand, set that sucker, and then at end step allow us to bring back this copy of Bullet Train. We'll activate Trap Trick at end step so we can set a copy of Overdrive, then we'll activate Overdrive targeting Bullet Train to get a copy of Citadel, destroying Bullet Train and allowing us to add back Box. Box triggers when it's added from Graveyard, so we can also add a Trencher to hand. This should be Lights Out. We draw a copy of Metal Cruncher for turn, we'll activate Heavy Forward. We're going to add a copy of Anchor Drill to hand. We'll activate Anchor Drill's effect to summon this copy of Brutal Dozer, then Brutal Dozer's effect to get a copy of Harvester from our deck. We'll use Anchor Drill's level modulation effect, and then go into Goliath, ending on an Earth Slicer, eating the remainder of the board. We're going to switch our TK Calamities to attack position and get in without triggering this copy of Gamma. Our second match is up against a comedy jokester who has drawn Royal Tribute, and you should all know by now how we deal with these individuals on my channel. This game is noteworthy because it showcases a combo in which we've already drawn Ancient Gear Box, a hard garnet. We're going to normal summon a copy of Infinitrack Harvester and use its effect to get a copy of Dozer to hand. We'll go into a Goliath and then activate Dozer's effect to summon it from hand and a copy of Tunneler from deck. From here, we're going to overlay for a copy of River Stormer and then activate its effect to get a copy of Speeding Express Bullet Train. Next, we'll go into Goliath and summon the Bullet Train this time. Afterwards, we're going to link summon a copy of Anger Knuckle and then bring back this copy of Speed Express Bullet Train. We'll Stormer to bring back the Stormer and then go into a Goliath, triggering the effect of Tunneler to shuffle five cards back into our deck, including the box. Afterwards, we can link summon a copy of Ballista and search the box from our deck, which will still trigger. We'll use Box to get a copy of Trencher, and then we'll activate Trencher's effect, pitching this copy of Ballista so we can go into a Goliath and trigger Trencher's effect to bring back the Brutal Dozer. From here, we can go into Anger Knuckle, set two, and pass. Still pretty good. We'll trigger this copy of Speed Express Bullet Train in end step for a Dozer and wish our opponent best of luck. Unfortunately, they have best of luck. They will activate this copy of Necro Valley, so we have to shotgun the Anger Knuckle here, and there's the Royal Tribute. Oh boy. They'll pot of duality, they find a copy of Extravagance, we'll activate Overdrive so at end step we can summon a copy of Citadel from deck, and maybe we can just get in for a clean 6,000 here. 3,000, that is. We'll go for Heavy Forward to get a copy of Anchor Drill, just in case, and then we'll Trap Trick for a copy of Torrential Tribute, maybe we have to clear our board a little bit later. We'll get in for 3,000 and pass it back to our opponent. We'll activate Speedy Express Bullet Train, but of course it will be negated by Necro Valley. They're going to go ahead and activate Royal Tribute, so excited to fire this card they forgot they had Extravagance set, and pass it back to us. We'll activate Heavy Forward. Oh, we find a Brutal Dozer. We'll go to the battle phase and attack in for 3,000. You gotta find a monster or you're dead. And they don't. That's what you get for playing Royal Tribute. We'll draw for turn and really rub it in our opponent's face as they activate another There Can Be Only One. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Bird Up, do do dee the worst deck in the metagame. Unfortunately for us, while their hand does suck, it has a couple of pieces of interaction that are going to be very difficult to play through, especially considering we've drawn Box. They're going to lead with a copy of Fractar, sending a Nerval to the graveyard so they can add a Keros to hand. They're going to normal summon the Keros and foolish burial a DD Crow, you gotta do what you gotta do. They'll make a Simorgan because they don't have a Link Rebo, they have to go for the Mist Valley Apex Avian setup, which is much weaker. Okay, we might be able to do this. We'll leave with the copy of Metal Cruncher, activate its effect, and then Chain Forbidden Droplet, only to walk directly into the infip. All right, no big deal. We can still make this work. We'll activate Heavy Forward in order to get a Brutal Dozer to hand, then we'll summon the Brutal Dozer, and then summon from our deck a copy of Anchor Drill, so we can summon it back from the graveyard with the Trencher and make a VFD. We'll go into a River Stormer here and use River Stormer's effect so we can get a copy of Speeding Express Bullet Train, going into a Goliath and activating Trencher directly into a Cult by the Grave. Oh, fine. We'll activate River Stormer's effect and bring it back before going into a Goliath and summoning the Bullet Train. Afterwards, we're going to have to be satisfied with an Anger Knuckle. This isn't the worst 
worst thing in the world, but leaving the Simorg alive is devastating. We get to add back the box, and because we haven't triggered box, we get to get a trencher from deck, but they get to trigger Simorg for a barrier statue, which is pretty much lights out. They draw a Nerval, and while they don't have the material in Graveyard to make a second really powerful monster off the Keras, it probably doesn't matter. At end step, they're going to be able to get a Cobalt Sparrow, and that's going to be able to add more interaction to their hand. This is our last turn. We have a Machina Redeployment, which is a pretty sweet top deck, but we can't normal summon the Metal Cruncher given we have a heavy forward on our side of the field. At end step, they'll get another Cobalt Sparrow, this time getting a Sapphire Swallow, and I think that's it. They will tanky for a Fractal. They'll activate Fractal's effect in order to send the third Nerval and get another Keras. They're going to normal summon a Sapphire Swallow, going to assemble Nightingale and Keras for three, making Ray. All right, next game. So it's time for game two, and while our hand isn't fantastic, our opponent has... Unfortunately for them, not drawn a single bird in Bird Up. Well, good luck. We're going first, we're going to lead with a copy of Infinitrack Harvester. They're going to chain an infinite impermanence. Ugh, that's frustrating, but allows us to get the Dara Crane out of our hand. Next, we're going to go for Trencher, popping this Harvester, and then making a Goliath so we can summon this copy of Speed Express Bullet Train and trigger Trencher's effect to bring back the Harvester. Next, we're going to go into a Ballista, triggering Ballista's effect to get a copy of Box, and then triggering the effect of Box. This is a weird ad, but we're getting Tunneler. We'll activate Tunneler's effect, summoning itself, and then sending it to the graveyard for a Goliath, doing that a couple of times and making Anger Knuckle. You might know what we're up to by this point. We can go into a copy of Dora, then trigger Dora's effect in order to target itself, then activate Tunneler, shuffling five of these suckers back into the extra deck, including three Goliaths, to draw some cards. We're going to activate Brutal Dozer's effect we find off the draw in order to summon a Trencher from deck and overlay for a River Stormer. We'll activate River Stormer's effect in order to send to the graveyard a copy of Citadel before going into Goliath, sending Goliath to the graveyard for River Stormer, trying to equip Goliath, remembering that our copy of Dora is unaffected, and triggering the effect of Bullet Train at end step for a Dozer. This is a decent setup. Our opponent is on full house! Alright, they'll go for the Nerval in order to get another Tri Brigade to hand and activate Tanky to get, I guess, the third Fractal. They're going to normal summon a Fractal, that's going to prompt the Dora from us. We'll pop it with this Dara Crane that was still attached. They'll go for the Karas, and we will activate Trap Trick. Let's get ourselves a copy of Overdrive. We can Overdrive here popping the Goliath, so we can summon from deck a copy of Metal Cruncher. That'll trigger the effect of Metal Cruncher and the effect of Citadel, all chain-blocked under the Goliath, which realistically isn't going to do anything for our unaffected Dora. After Resolution, we'll trigger the effect of Box and the effect of Citadel, so we can pop our Metal Cruncher and clear our opponent's field. They'll pass back, and that's all she wrote. For turn, we draw a Torrential Tribute. We'll normal summon a copy of Anchor Drill and use this effect to summon a Brutal Dozer, triggering Brutal Dozer for a Harvester, and level modulating so we can make an Earth Slicer. No need to complicate this. We'll switch to attack position and get in for lethal. So it's time for that all-important game three, and our opponent has drawn perfectly. This is all they could hope for. I'll be real with you, I play this one a little greedy. They're going to begin with a copy of Turquoise Warbler, summoning a copy of Cobalt Sparrow from their hand. Now, Ash Blossom isn't very good against this deck because they search so much in one turn. None of the cards are necessarily critical except for the summon from deck at end step with their copy of Simorg. I'm holding the Ash for that, but because their combo is so expansive, they can unfortunately make an Appaloosa before we get to that position. They're going to do so now, going into Appaloosa and triggering the effect of Nerval and Flagette in sequence, finding a Forbidden Droplet off the top. Come on! They'll go for Keras and then activate Keras's effect for three. Wow, well, not even going into Link Haribo. No respect whatsoever. They'll make an Apex Avian and pass back to us. All right, we could do this. We're going to lead with a copy of Redeployment. Afterwards, we're going to normal summon a copy of Metal Cruncher, which eats a Forbidden Droplet. Okay, that's one negate out of the way. Next, we're going to set three and pass back to our opponent, who will Sovereignty for a Stormwinds. Now, I need that Stormwinds off the field, but they can't out it themselves. They're going to link three for a Ray, and they have no negation on their side of the field. Let's Overdrive. We're going to activate it, getting a copy of Citadel from our deck that was shuffled back by Ray before Trap Tricking for a Torrential Tribute. They Monster Reborn. Oh, God. For a copy of Apex Avian, we will Torrential Tribute, but unfortunately, they'll negate with Apex Avian, and we'll chain Citadel. No big deal. We do get to keep the Citadel on our side of the field. They'll care us for four, and I'm pretty sure they're going to banish the Citadel, which means we'll be able to resolve our urgent schedule until they tribute summon Apex Avian. Oh my god, I forgot you could tribute this card. Okay, well, I guess we're going to take a ton of damage. It's got to be something crazy off the top. We have the Ash Blossom for the Simorg, but of course they still have negates attached to the Appaloosa, so it's going to accomplish nothing. Let's find something crazy. Yep, that won't do it. So we're back with the deck, and yeah, it's that time of day again. You're just going to have to get used to it. We played that last game like garbage. I feel like we could have walked with it if we were any good whatsoever at Yu-Gi-Oh. Eh, whatever. Sometimes you got to turn on the blinders and just let the spirit of the train enter you. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, this deck is extremely rewarding. It's unbelievably difficult, but mastery of this feels like almost nothing else. It's so adaptable that a clever pilot can weasel their way out of almost any situation. Two, it's powerful. The one card VFD shines, of course, but even Anger Knuckle set Torrential is oftentimes good enough, especially if you're already up six cards. 
And three, it interacts on a different axis than anything else. Citadel is hard for some decks to clear, Slicer is amazing at simplifying the game state, and a Lubing Liba means many decks have to play from the back foot immediately. And the cons. One, it's hard. Obviously the difficulty is a skill test, but playing the deck optimally, even for an hour, feels like a near impossible task. Two, it's got a pretty bad matchup spread. Obviously decks that lose to VFD have a rough time, but if you're playing Lich or a deck that doesn't care about monster removal, sorry. And three, its lines of play are something decks aren't usually prepared for, but its bosses are. VFD and Zeus aren't exactly a shocking sight. All in all, this deck is powerful, strong, and rewarding but likely has just slightly too low of a ceiling to break out of Rogue. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons. This is the last time we'll be using the January card. <clears throat> Dominic Ernst, Hakuo, AJBYGO, Alex Perea, Candyman, Chibi Gohan, Coolmaster X, Crispy, DimSum05, Frosty, King Magic Ruler, Nightmari, Mike Carlotti, Oli Bjarki Austfioro, Rocky Hernandez, Rose Lapine, Seeker, Space Dandy1993, Tyler Slacks, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Amida Lafondi, Algis Marcin Cavizius, Amaranta V, Andrew Benson, Andrew Ferruia, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Angry Bread, Apex Systems, Billy Williams, Blake Root, Blair, Brendan Brown, Candide, Chad Bortz, Chess Prime, Chorps Away, CJ Alex, Crystal Red Fox, Dan the Man Hoban, Darcy Taves, Dylan Conley, Doug Parslow, Dive Missile, Distran, Ember Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fangwong, FUTR, Gavin Charlie Kowski, Hank Cheesecake, Inner Crescent, Isaac Jackson, Jane Linya, Jared Lorman, Jason Leonard, Jeff Leonard, Jose Luis Cortez, Julia Chulian, Cali, Corey Hess, Guru Kaze, Lake Bayer, Lawrence, Lottie, Lucas Girdis, Lucky Number Five, Lucas Arizo Hansen, Mac the Moderate, Major Duncan, Max, Meadow Edits, Mezzo Emrys, Michael Oskvark, Miyuno Arashi, Nick Extreme 99, Niru Soup, Nick Dolores, Papa Dragonite, Precise Bike 13, Picnic Blasted, Pro FP2, Pro Yugi Dad, Sam Soon, Sapphic Ashley, Sean Deal, Second Standards Objective, Swinkles, This Machine 237, TJ Steakhouse, Yuri's Best, Zach McKee, and Yukie. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, see you. <laughs>